looks like you've got rid of all the ocelots. Yeah. Now proceed with the rescue of Sokolov. According to Eva, you should start by going to the crevice to the north and... Can we trust her? What's that? Eva is with the KGB, isn't she? Can I really believe what she says? How do I know she won't double-cross me? There are no guarantees in espionage, Snake. Only calculated guesses. At this point in time, the KGB stands nothing to gain by stabbing us in the back. So you're saying I can trust her? I'm saying the chance that she'll betray you is low. Ah. Uh. Of course, we checked the route she gave you against our own data. It looks like a pretty solid infiltration route. It makes good use of weak spots in the enemy's defenses. You shouldn't have any problems. Follow the route Eva showed you and proceed with the mission. Roger. First, enter the cave through the crevice. Eva said it was to the north, so head that way. That swamp seems pretty deep. It's probably deep enough to dive underwater and swim around. Press the crawl button when you're swimming on the surface to dive underwater. The controls when you're underwater are quite different from when you're on land. The left stick controls the direction you're facing. Press up, down, left or right to turn in that direction. Press the CQC button or the crawl button to move forward. Each button press will move you one stroke forward. Press the button repeatedly to swim faster. You can also press the action button to surface in an emergency. While you're swimming, you can use the right stick to look in a different direction without changing the direction you're going. Snake, you'll be helpless if a crocodile attacks you in the water. You can't see behind you when you're swimming. So if you're in a crocodile-infested swamp, keep an eye on your six. Also, by using your sensors, you should be able to detect crocodiles before they get too close. Eva was right when she said that operating in an unknown jungle at night is extremely dangerous. In my former outfit, the SAS, we'd always be sure to set up camp before sunset and wait until daybreak before setting out again. Being able to stay in that abandoned factory made things a lot easier for you. You ought to be thanking, either. Major, what's this temptation Eva was talking about? In the Old Testament of the Bible, Eve was seduced by a snake into tasting the fruit of knowledge. By eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and were cast out from the Garden of Eden. Thus, it was the snake who led mankind into original sin. Come to think of it, I did break a rib in the virtuous mission. Maybe that's where Eva came from. But the one who tempted Adam into eating the forbidden fruit was Eve. You may be working together, but she's still a KGB operative. Don't let your guard down. I don't intend to. Snake, you'll be helpless. Hey, Snake, remember back at the abandoned factory when you whittled the grip of that 45 down? Yeah. I've never heard of a customization like that before. Why the grip? To fit it with a knife. A knife? You're gonna keep the knife and the gun both at the ready? That's the idea. Why would you want to do that? Sometimes a knife works better in close proximity encounters. So I equip both at the same time. That way I can switch back and forth in an instant. Badass. So that's that. CQC. Sounds like the Cobra Unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. For unbearable... T Snake, you said Eva said her Mauser was a Type 17, right? Yeah, what about it? That model was produced in the 1920s in a weapons lab in the Shangxi province in China. The cartridge part sticks out lower than the original to accommodate 45 caliber rounds. The barrel and chamber are a little bit thicker, too. But most telling of all, it's got Chinese characters engraved on both sides of the frame like you saw. And that firing stance Eva was talking about where you hold the gun horizontally? That's a trademark of the Chinese. Just like you were saying, when you're firing in full auto mode, the muzzle jump effect gives you a horizontal strafing motion. They say it's especially deadly in indoor and close-range mop-up actions. The Japanese called it bandit shooting and used to dread it. Makes you wonder where she learned to shoot like that. 
You know that army motorcycle that Eva was riding? That's a replica of a German model. A replica? Yeah. After World War II, the Soviets confiscated an entire assembly line from a German motorcycle factory. Machines and all. And then they took it back with them and started producing replicas? Exactly. Originally, that motorcycle was designed to be used with a sidecar attached. That means it's got enough power to drag a 200-plus pound sidecar around. So that's how she could pull off all those crazy stunts. Uh-huh. Of course, it takes a lot of skill to be able to control that much power. That Eva chick is something else. The Davy Crockett's that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire... I see you've got yourself a ration. Rations are portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. I've heard some nasty stories about how they taste. It looks like the rumors are true. Great. Hey, you should be grateful. Those things are designed to last. No matter how long you keep a ration, it'll never go bad. And they're surprisingly good for you, too. I'd take a snake over this any day, even if it's a little rotten. You are hopeless. Snake, be careful. That area is inhabited by coral snakes. The coral snake is a venomous snake that originally hails from the Americas. Its venom is a very potent neurotoxin, so don't let it bite you. If you do get bitten, go into the survival viewer right away and use cure to neutralize the poison with a serum injection. The colorful red and black patterns on the coral snake are a warning sign. Apparently, the bright flashy colors and pattern let other animals know that it carries a deadly poison that keeps them from attacking. There are many animals that mimic the colors of known poisonous animals as a defense. See, by mimicking other poisonous creatures, they increase their chances of survival. There is another non-poisonous snake called the milk snake that borrows its coloring from the coral snake. Uh-huh. You're not even listening, are you? No. <sighs> okay, we'll talk about something you're interested in then. The taste? Yes. It says here that coral snakes are pretty good in a snaky kind of way. A snaky kind of way, huh? That area is inhabited by the milk snake. The milk snake closely resembles the coral snake, but it's actually not venomous. Even so, you'll still take damage if it bites you, so don't get too close. Hmm. So is there a way to tell the difference between a milk snake and a coral snake? It's pretty difficult. They really do look almost exactly alike. I guess if I had to pick something, I'd say it's that the milk snake is much less aggressive. Okay. Ah, I just thought of a better way. You're going to love this. What? Eat it. Eat it? Yeah. The guide says milk snakes don't taste very good. Is that right? But if I've already caught and eaten it, what does it matter which kind of snake it was? It doesn't, does it? Shoot, I thought I had a good idea. Snake, that area is inhabited by the poison dart frog. The poison dart frog is native to the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. They normally grow between two and five centimeters in length, but for some reason the ones in that area seem to be much bigger than that. Poison dart frogs are known to carry a potent neurotoxin called pomeliotoxin. Long ago, people used the poison to coat their arrows for hunting. Watch out, because if you eat one, you'll get food poisoning. When you're bitten by a venomous animal such as a snake...
That area is inhabited.
Snake, are you there? Eva? Did you miss me? Did you make it without any trouble? No one saw me. So you're back with Volgan? In a matter of speaking. What about the boss? Yeah, she's here too. Better be careful. Thanks, I will. The boss and I get along pretty well, though. I guess we traitors have a lot in common. Why would anyone want to defect? Betraying your country like that, I, I just don't get it. Are you talking about the boss? Why'd you do it? Weren't you born and raised in America? Yes, in a small rural town. I never even knew there were other countries, other cultures, other ways of thinking. Until I went to work for the NSA. And one day, I found I'd lost faith in the things I'd been taking for granted. What did you see? What was it that made you want to change sides? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. I saw the universe. The universe? Not the actual universe. The universe as the intelligence community sees it. I realized that the gravity in this universe was holding me back. That's all. People and countries are both changed by their environment. And by the times. That sounds like what the boss was saying. There's a world of difference between this country and America. But it's only a difference of position, a difference of perspective. Coming here made me realize something. Half of what I'd been told was a complete and utter lie. The other half was a conveniently constructed lie. Where's the truth, then? It's hidden in the lies. Are you lying, too? Who knows? I've been trained to make even the most severe falsehood sound like the honest truth. Weren't you? No. I believe because I have to, even if it is a lie. That's part of my mission. I'll have to remember that. If you need me, give me a call on the radio. My frequency is 142.52. See ya. It looks like you've got rid of all the ocelots. Yeah. Now proceed with the rescue. I see you've caught a coral sna I, I mean, a milk snake. The milk snake closely resembles the coral snake, but it's actually not venomous. Even so, you'll still take damage if it bites you, so don't get too close. Hmm. So is there a way to tell the difference between a milk snake and a coral snake? It's pretty difficult. They really do look almost exactly alike. I guess if I had to pick something, I'd say it's that the milk snake... Snake, be careful. I might not have told you this yet, but that swamp is rigged with traps. The traps in that area are set to go off when a rope stretched along the ground is disturbed. Keep a close eye on the ground and make sure you don't trip over a rope. The traps in that area are set to go off when a rope stretched along the ground is disturbed. Keep a close eye on the ground. The traps in that...
reinforcements. Use extra caution. Good. You made it to Bolshaya Pust. The name Bolshaya Pust means something close to the Great Cavity. It probably got that name from the crevice to the north. There's a fortified area in the southern part of Bolshaya Pust that's strung with barbed wire. To the north of that is a relay station that serves as both a depot for material shipments and a communication facility. The crevice leading to the cave is located to the north of the relay station. Head north. Eva, what kind of unit are those ocelots I fought a little while ago? The ocelot unit is an elite group composed of soldiers handpicked from among the ranks of Spetsnaz, the special forces wing of Gru. They've undergone even more rigorous training than regular Spetsnaz. Their skill with weapons is the stuff of legends. You'll find they're much better shots than the rest of Gru. Watch yourself. The crevice that leads to the cave is to the north of your current location. Keep heading north.
HQ. Patrol here. No problems detected. Understood. Return to your position. <laughs> 